when you work with three or four monitors and everything pops up the wrong monitor. Okay. Um, Again, uh, probably everybody knows me. Uh, I'm not an MVP, uh, but I'm actually a, a PSTP uh, partner specialist uh, now, or, and they've changed the designation. So I'm actually uh, a specialist for Document DB and Azure uh, uh, Basic API and Logic Apps. Okay, and start off with, I just threw this again at the last minute, and about the series, the overall objective of this is to utilize document DDB as a repository for HL7 Fire. Uh, currently, there's uh, nothing on Azure to support HL7, and this is going to be the, uh, I believe, the first uh, major uh, uh, push to have uh, support for HL7, especially with Fire, should be coming out uh, as basically ANSI approves or probably within a year's time. So we want to get this up uh, previous to that. And I started off by developing a Azure API connector for Document DB. Um, that's being changed a little bit. Uh, my, of course, my NDA uh, prevents me from uh, basically explaining what's going on, but uh, essentially uh, the API connectors are kind of going away and more use of uh, logic apps in comparison. Uh, there are a API but not connectors, so really you're not generating a connector app. And basically, uh, we're using Azure Logic Apps in a manual mode with an HTTP connector, and that will allow us to expose the entire document DB REST API. Now, client applications uh, for uh, Document DB as an HL7 repository will include BizTalk on premise, Office 365, Dynamics, CRM, mobile engagements, and other adapters or other devices and applications that will support the HL7 Fire REST API. Now, I'll be publishing a uh, swagger on the REST API for Fire uh, coming up within the next uh, few months. And eventually, the uh, Azure solution could act as a fire server. Uh, so that gives the availability, instead of using it as a temporary repository, but as a fire server in the south. So I won't go into depth on, on, on that. And the agenda for today is we're going to go back and just take a quick review of what the document DB REST API is all about. Uh, also understanding the overall problem, which is uh, uh, developing into more and more uh, problem solution, uh, more or less. We're going to take a look at high-level designs that I've gone through in this and how Swagger fits in. We'll look at design and development, and then we'll identify maybe next steps in this. Okay. So a review of the document DBI REST API, especially uh, if you attended my last session, this is kind of repetitious, but if you haven't attended a session before, uh, basically uh, this will give you an idea of what the document DBI REST API is. Okay, okay. Uh, we have features and, oh, somehow I got this. Okay, front operations, REST, SQL query, leveraging that. Document DB is unique upon the no SQL stores because it supports actually SQL queries. It was developed and delivered as a service. It's schema free, so it's queryable and JSON aware. 
transactional process into an integrated JavaScript language. So you can actually create methods, uh, functions, uh, procedures, and user-defined functions, triggers in JavaScript. It has predictable performance and to very easily tunable consistency. This is what the resource model looks like, the, the API, uh, REST API. We have a document DB account at the highest level. Then we have a database. So databases will have users, and users, of course, that have permissions on what they're able to, to actually do within a particular database. Now, within a database, we have collections. And a collection uh, consists, of, of course, documents, and documents can also have attachments. But we can also have stored procedures, triggers, and user-defined functions. Within that. Sorry for the background noise on there. The access model. Okay. We have an item resource on this, so we have a RESTful interaction over HTTP. We have standard HTTP verbs and semantics, and can utilize, of course, BizTalk as a client. Has built-in support for TCP for smart clients, and designed as a gateway as well as direct connectivity operations options. And this is a sample, basically, of a post uh, to my account, uh, documentsor.net, TBS, which is a database, so, you know, the name of the uh, database, and what we're creating here, we're creating a database. Okay. Understanding the overall problem. Well, the overall problem is this in a whole. It's document DB itself uh, has a REST API, but it really doesn't expose the REST API. You really have to create an application that can utilize the REST API, and so it doesn't have an interface itself. It doesn't have a connector built in to it. Uh, you have to kind of proxy or create an application, uh, Swagger, maybe an API application, which I started, I've been working on, that will use or define all the properties, the inputs, the outputs, everything necessary to make calls into document DB and actually generating a complete REST API for document DB. Uh, most of the applications with document DB at, up to this time has been more with the net API, which involves a lot of coding uh, by utilizing the REST capabilities, REST API, eliminate all that coding. And, of course, coding brings problems and testing. So we're trying to simplify the problem. And I've gone through many iterations, basically. I've tried to create a, a, an API connector app. Uh, the issue with that is you really almost have to go back and utilize the net SDK in order to create that. So that gets to be complex. So I've gone ahead and tried to publish just a straight API app. Uh, not too much of success with that. I am able to generate, uh, generate a complete swagger for almost all the operations uh, that are available within the document DB REST API. And kind of a high level design we're going to just take a look at at this particular point here. We're going to start off with the initial design. The initial design, as we can see, you have on the left document DB, and you have a storage blob. The storage blob is for containment of attachments. 
Now, attachments could also be anywhere, sitting anywhere on, on uh, anywhere, period, as long as you're able to have a URI specified for that attachment. And I started off with a connector app, going back into design and trying to development, and was hoping to have logic apps connecting to the connector app, going backwards to there, creating app services, and utilizing the JSON adapter directly from BizTalk on-premises. Uh, this was my initial design. I spent a couple weeks on this and tried implementation, and that uh, with a lot of help and uh, assistance from the uh, both of the program managers from uh, the Zur uh, API and also from the uh, Document DB on this, uh, with coming changes uh, for a new version on uh, what's being pushed out very shortly. So the API connector app is actually going away. It's really uh, too complex and uh, it really doesn't support what is necessary. I'd have to go back and I'm duplicating effort in that respect. The next revision basically was to create a document DB logic app. And with the logic app, uh, I'm using the HTTP connector, uh, which is an app, API app that supports post, get, puts, deletes, and queries. And from this particular point, point was going to use a JSON adapter to push JSON documents, basically uh, with each verb, into the Logic app. And the Logic app would, of course, access the document DB and return uh, the response, the JSON response, in this particular case, since it is JSON. Although I can return uh, other types of responses, XML text and uh, as we go on to maybe future uh, uh, versions, we'll probably do that. So after talking a little bit more with the uh, product managers and uh, again being a, a TSP, I have access to the, uh, uh, let's say, the Microsoft uh, internal groups and um, finding issues and such like that, uh, it was recommended that uh, maybe cut this down a bit. And then the next revision basically is, oh, am I down? Oh, one minute. It's coming down here, is eliminating all those separate calls and using a standard HTTP app with my logic app and using an app service that would dynamically pass in uh, if it's a get, a post, and everything. So your HTTP API app is basically becoming more generic. So I only need one to handle all the REST operations. And uh, I'll be demoing a little bit of this today. Uh, again, but not from BizTalk, but from a client application. I still haven't got BizTalk hooked up to this. I'm still at the point where I'm testing uh, internally. I want to get everything working inside before I hook up BizTalk and start testing with that. So this is the initial release that uh, uh, I'm in the process of uh, developing and testing at this particular point. Release 2.0 is going to include, well, we have a, a, a WFCF line of business adapter in BizTalk uh, for DocumentDB. Now, this could go through the client app 
or we can actually, I've been looking at it, and this is something really in a future release after the initial uh, release is completed, uh, maybe going indirect into document DB. But uh, I think the preference is to go through a logic app and an HTTP uh, post in that respect. We're also including a cloud Office 365 and uh, looking at the APIs are changing on that. There is support for a REST API in Office 365 and other cloud applications, but uh, utilizing an app service, which will pretty much handle my logic and business rules. Now I'm using application insights and API management. Even though it's a, a logic app, I need some management on that basically because there's going to be rules I need to apply. And so that's going to be very efficient in that respect. Release 3 is going to utilize the, again, the service bus adapter for BizTalk and the line of business adapter, and the service bus will come through a logic app, which will then go into, uh, as a proxy, to another logic app, which is our main logic app for the uh, document DB, and uh, that includes that. As we go a little further, in the last release here, is we're going to have support for CRM. Uh, now, CRM is, is basically uh, can be used as a, as a client application, but one of the nice things about with CRM is uh, I, there is a REST API for it, and what I want to do is be, is, is be able to use the data contained within document DB uh, for predictive analytics with uh, CRM or whatever CRM decides to use with the data. We're also now having a notification hub that we attach, so we have a gateway for devices. And also we have mobile engagements. So this is pretty much the uh, final release 3, release 5.0, oh, well, that's in the future. And hopefully I'm going to be able to get this all done and completed uh, within a year's time. I'm going to get uh, this out there before uh, HL7 Fire becomes a uh, uh, final release as a standard so that we'll be able to uh, handle uh, in Azure HL7 Fire so we'll be able to compete with other uh, manufacturers. How Swagger fits in? Well, as I mentioned before, I needed to create a basically an API app. I needed to be able to generate, and I've generated an app uh, right now. It's uh, it's on the back burner that I'm working on. But what we have is I use what we call Swagger Hub to generate my swagger. And in essence, what I did here was using the documentation from DocumentDB API, REST API, and it's uh, a little bit updated, and uh, as I found through testing and such, that uh, what was marked optional was actually required and such. So I managed to create a, a swagger and I was able to actually uh, test applications uh, pretty much on there. Uh, I had to go, the issue is, is uh, I'm testing from external and it's specifically the, uh, it's in, internal uh, limitations on the um, uh, specifically on the HTTP connector and such, but I was able to do it this way. And I, I have a 
Let me bring this down. I'll pull this down here. And this is uh, actually my swagger. Editor. We got my version information and interactive. So everybody can see it. Here's a little. Okay. Show hide. So in essence, creating pretty much, let's take this, take a look at one, a database. We can list databases. So we have a model, which is specified here, and then we have a model schema. And one of the biggest issues with DocumentDB is authorization. Document BDDB does not have a static value for that. That has to be generated. It has to be generated and it also has a pretty much an authorization token which you're creating and it has an expiration. So you have to go in and I have a little tool which actually does that and I'll show you when I get to the demo right on Azure, uh, that I'm able to generate that token. And it's basically a type master and such like that. I had to create uh, using an MS date, and that had to be in a uh, particular format, which is, uh, let's see, Friday, Greenwich Mean Time. Well, it's cut up here. And I'm not going to bother testing this, but I have stored procedures. I'm going to pulse the stored procedure. Uh, request. Request would be actually be the body. I'm able to execute a stored procedure. So in this particular case, uh, well, the XMS version now is, if anybody's working with, um, well, the REST service of uh, DocumentDB, it, uh, it's now 8-6-2015. I may need to pass in the XMS requirements options for this. And much like that, going back to my editor, I got a little bit fun in here trying to figure out what's, what my errors are. Jump to this line that it doesn't match one of. So, but it says there's errors, but it's really not an error because it does work. This is all created by hand, and this is actually in a format that makes it easier to work with. Uh, you can generate it in other tools, and I believe uh, we had an excellent uh, presentation uh, a few weeks ago on Oswagger, which is something I learned a lot from. And uh, it's a little bit of a learning experience working with this. One of the nice things about this tool is I'm able to come in and generate a C-sharp client. And let me just put it up in my desktop and come here and we're going to pull it down here and I'm going to do it that way. Okay, we'll just pull it down take a look. Design and development. This is my logic app and my logic app is set to run manually because there's no triggers involved with this. Uh, my authentication would go, of course, in the authentication area. Oops, going back to that one. Is my URI is pretty much a static uh, value. Where you see healthcare. Healthcare is the name of my, uh, pretty much my database. And as I mentioned uh, in another version, None of these values will need to be in there. So basically, I would be doing everything in a code view, which as I had here, 
So this is basically my code view here. And it passes in, uh, as you can see, uh, my URI. And my URI is static in this respect. So it's my database is, uh, is actually fire. Healthcare is the uh, document DB uh, source. And uh, fire uh, is my DBS, as I mentioned and then collections and my content type and such. So here basically I would pass in a, 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 a body, an ID, so generating a new collection, which would be art collection and such. So going on here, let me just double check. I have a live demo and I'm going to pop down on this. So let me see. Okay, I need to pop down out of here. Oh, oops, hold on. Let me go back and get my desktop. Come on. Okay, there we go, sorry. So I have a little application I developed. Hopefully it works. And specifically, I would pass in my master key. And my master key is for document DB. And I would select a resource and have a static value. So in this particular case, it's DBS as a resource. So, or actually, let's do, I think we got collections. Collections is a resource. So I'm going to submit it. And that's going to bring up my authorization code, which I'm going to copy. And going back here to here, let's take a look at And I'm going to paste in my authorization here. Click OK. I didn't like that. Well, call view. OK, now. Authorization. Okay. I'm doing a post, okay. So I'm trying a new Well, it's fine when things don't work the way it's supposed to be. Oh now I gotta go into the headers. Headers, let's see. Headers, oh yes. Headers, body. Headers. Add this in, and I'm going to put down authorization. Devices, okay. 
back to my designer. Save back into run now. Failed, okay. I'll put bad request URL is invalid. Okay, that's nice. Oh well. It's nice doing a demo with nothing works. <laughs> Let's see. URL. A post. Okay. API TPS. I mean, don't double check on my. Authorization, custom collection, okay, there is nothing there, okay, it is authorization. Others can uh, change on. We go back, and I'm going to need to user agent. Okay. Oh, we need XMS state. XMS version.
XMSK way. Okay. I don't need the database, I do that's already there. Authorization. Let's create new collections by application. Type HTTP. Oh, it's got to be HTTPS. Uh, yes, that's the problem because of my URI. Uh oh, okay. Can't do it, so we're going to go HTTP, and now we're going to change the URI and there. Build again. URL is invalid. Oh boy, let's go back and Mine. 
Okay. Bear with me here. It's always fun. I do my documents in there, so only another hour ago, so everybody's got some time, I guess. How many times have this have this gone through where for anybody else who was working before I started? And it's working out, working afterwards. And these blades so drive you crazy, coming up and down and such like that. Okay, well, let me go back to my deck. And specifically, uh, Okay, as you saw there. Next steps. Well, you know what my next steps are, but uh, I apologize for the demo that didn't work, but I'll have to go back and figure that out. And I think I will append or uh, publish something on this that uh, maybe a um, a video that shows actually how it does work and what it returns. Uh, unfortunately, I can't uh, publish any code for this uh, at this time, but uh, if anybody is interested in learning a little bit more about this or interested in becoming a partner in crime with me because it's getting to the point where it's getting a little complicated and uh, it's a lot for one person to handle, and I appreciate if somebody wants to partner with me on this. It could be uh, something that could be as a sellable product, or we can just in turn end up giving it uh, to the community. Uh, and with that, uh, uh, I guess any questions and answers, and I thank you for your time. And okay, so I'm not going to. Oh, I could have shut my screen there. Okay. Huh. Uh, let me change. Okay. Uh, stop showing your screen. There we go. And I'm going to return it to uh, there we go. It's all yours.
sharing my screen. I made the presenter again. Uh,